So what we built in this demo uh, and, and with Halcyon uh, was essentially a hybrid rendering pipeline. Uh, there are ways of using uh, ray tracing for, for everything, uh, and we, we do that in our uh, reference mode where we pass trace. Uh, and there are benefits of using ray tracing for everything except when it comes to performance. Uh, so what we built actually was a fairly pragmatic hybrid rendering pipeline and something we want to explore. But, but how do different techniques fit in uh, into an overall pipeline that can deliver these type of visuals that we're after? So we start uh, with traditional uh, deferred shading, uh, which we rasterize. We rasterize the G-buffer and, and render it out. It's pretty fast um, uh, and pretty simple stuff. GPUs have been optimized for this for, for, well, for a long time. Uh, once we have that with the G-buffer and the Z-buffer, we're able to calculate uh, shadows. Uh, for uh, We primarily just have the sunlight in, in this scene. And that we can either do through a classical rasterization technique like cascaded shadow maps, or we can ray trace them. And in this demo, we, we ray trace our shadows. So, so we, don't, we pretty much have perfect shadows everywhere in the scene, which is really attractive and requires less tweaking by programmers and, and, um, uh, and, or, or artists in that sense, and, and just works. And, and, um, we also compute uh, lighting for, for the sun and potentially other light sources. Uh, that's pretty simple. Uh, we do it through just oh, any type of compute path. So uh, you can do it through tile-based or clustered, uh, clustered techniques, but it's a deferred method that we use here. So that's just using compute. Uh, we also do reflections. Uh, this is a big complex part. Uh, in this scene, we could have done planar reflections and could have some cube maps uh, or some artist manually placed environment maps here, here and there in the scene. Uh, we did have SS SSR for a while also, but we choose to just go full, full on uh, ray tracing uh, in the scenes for, the, um, for all the reflections. Um, and to f sort of fill in uh, the lights, and, and instead of having a, a single ambi uh, ambient term or something like that, uh, we have a, a dynamic global nation system that, uh, that uses um, uh, sort of uh, caches uh, uh, irradiance and, and calculates that using uh, ray tracing as well, which is a, something that's very, very difficult to do through just uh, rasterization and not very efficient to do through rasterization either. Um, another technique uh, that we use is just image occlusion. So the global nation is fairly large, uh, large scale and not uh, uh, not that detailed. Uh, image occlusion helps to sort of fill in the decreases uh, in, in the scenes and, and add some extra detail and sort of contact shadows in that. That we support both things through screen space techniques using well some fairly high quality uh, screen space image occlusion, but we also have a ray tracing mode for it that that, that does it uh, more correctly and more accurately, uh, but at the performance cost. Um, and uh, for transparencies in this scene, we don't have that many, but uh, we, we use a very different technique there. We actually do it, uh, we do that all through ray tracing and texture space that Colin will be talking a little bit more about uh, later. And then finally, to sort of compose together uh, the entire scene, uh, we do all our post-processing in, 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 in compute in a couple of different type of passes to our traditional sort of bokeh decimal field and motion blur and, and tone mapping and, and all that. So we end up with this fairly hybrid pipeline of how everything connects, uh, but that's exactly what we wanted to uh, explore and see what's the right solution for this specific demo for your shadows or for your reflections and translucency. And we believe that uh, this is not necessarily these, uh, the final answer uh, needed for this demo as hardware evolves and as our thinking and the communities. Uh, uh, contributions of sort of evolve and learning is uh, evolve in this area will probably change uh, things around here, but we wanted to start to explore it. Uh, and we will attempt to do a live demo of this now. At a high level, uh, this demo, this is how this demo is set up with the new DXR concepts. So first, uh, before we spawn a mesh, uh, we build the bottom acceleration for it. So um, the API allows you to specify multiple types of geometry. Um, but for the demo, we mainly use triangles. And so uh, once the bottom accelerations are built, um, mesh instances are then uh, specified in the top acceleration. Um, they basically represent a mesh uh, at a specific position and orientation in the world. And then once a mesh moves, uh, we update uh, its instance matrix, and that's in the top acceleration. Uh, we do this for all the meshes, uh, you, for all the little guys you saw in the video that move around. Uh, we do this every frame. It's really fast. I mean, it's just pushing new matrices. So you're not rebuilding ABBs, uh, unlike in the, um, the bottom acceleration. And then, um, let me just move down. Okay. And so um, once all of this is done, well, we can spawn some rays. Um, and we do this, obviously, with uh, ray generation shaders. And we have many of them to support uh, all, of the, the, all of our techniques. Uh, we have per instance hit shaders for all the ray types, like primary visibility or shadows, or other stuff like that. We have global mesh shaders. And 
all of these shaders need to be accessible at all times uh, for all the rays being launched in the scene. So that's why they, lived, they live in the shader table. And so first, let's look at how we handled uh, reflections uh, with ray tracing. So like Johan said, we took a hybrid approach uh, where we first rasterized primary visibility. And then we launched rays from the G-buffer. And all of this is done uh, in half resolution on two by two blocks, but obviously you can do this in, in full screen, in full res if you want. Uh, we then do a spatial temporal reconstruction at full resolution. And so from the image to the right, um, you know, you can see how, how ray trace reflections really adds and just works on all types of surfaces, whether it's flat or curved. And our original approach, uh, we tried combining it with SSR for performance, but in the end we just ray traced uh, just simply for, for simplicity and uniformity. And so uh, here's a breakdown of how we launch reflection arrays with some HLSL pseudocode uh, to the right. So don't copy paste this, it doesn't compile. Uh, but I just wanted to mark this down in a simple way so you guys get it after if you want to check the slides. And so first we select one of the two by two uh, pixels to trace. We reconstruct the position and vectors from the G buffer, uh, like uh, the direction, the normals, all that stuff. We initialize our low discrepancy Monte Carlo uh, Halton sequence and a random sequence, a render number sequence that we're going to use to rotate the Halton sequence. We initialize a brand new payload. We prepare a new ray. And um, when we prepare a ray, you define, you specify the origin of the ray and the direction. And in our case, we actually, uh, the direction is set from the material. So I'll get back to it. Uh, so it's not just like a, yeah. So we specify it from the material. Um, we trace and then we gather the results from the payload. and. For temporal filtering, we don't just gather a reflection color, but also a ray direction, the length of the ray, and one over the PDF. And so um, once we've generated the half-resolution images with the hit results, uh, we reuse them to synthesize uh, the full-resolution output. And so for every pixel uh, in the full-resolution output image, we use 16 samples from the half-res data. Um, you know, neighbors of high-res pixels obviously provide useful information, but we need to make sure uh, to, to, that it's not obvious that we reuse uh, retrace results between the, in the block. So we use a blue noise, uh, we use blue noise to kind of break it up and make sure that in a two by two quad, all pixels have different uh, results. And uh, you know, so this this kind of provides the the, the spatial part of the filter, uh, which we couple with temporal components similar to TA. And uh, finally, we have a second stage, a larger variance-driven bilateral filter to clean up the remaining noise, and it really helps with the rougher uh, reflections, which you'll see in the, in the live demo really helps. And so this is what the world would look like uh, if it was fully reflective, uh, so basically the worst case scenario. Uh, and so with ray tracing, you know, when you handle roughness properly, uh, reflections become so much more grounded and you know, with the occlusion, it looks so much better and looks really nice. And if we zoom on some details in comparison to the left, you have some really basic SSR. I think Tom put this together in like overnight or something. Uh, uh, in the middle, you have our ray trace G buffer reflections. Uh, obviously, on the ray traced ones, you can see under the robot, which you can't with the SSR um, because the information is missing. And to the right, you see our path trace uh, reference. And the thing is, if you squint a bit and uh, you squint the path trace nose away, you can kind of see that our approach is. Uh, really quite convincing. And so here's another example. Um, you know, everything feels much more grounded when, you know, when you have no of these sampling artifacts, uh, especially if you look at the paper clip in the middle, like you can see how the rays just make sense and our results look really close to path tracing.